Hi everyone, I'm Sarah Bell Reed, and today I'm taking a look at the new Vongen replay. Replay is a polyphonic virtual analog synthesizer with a very compact form factor. When I first heard about this instrument, I was a bit surprised because, of course, up until this point, Vongen has been a pedal manufacturer. I'm very fond of their pedals and have used them a lot in my music, so I was curious to see what their take on a synthesizer might be like. Vongen's effect pedals make obvious reference to some classic FX processors from the 1970s and 1980s. My personal impression is that their pedals sound really warm, but still really clean and precise. And as you'll see in a minute, there are some similar influences and sound qualities at work in the replay. So replay takes inspiration from classic polysynths from the 1980s, like the Roland Juno series and the Korg Poly 6. If you're familiar with analog synthesizers from this era, you'll be right at home. Replay excels at beautiful harmonic textures, arpeggios, and ambient pads, all the classic synth stuff. So if you're familiar with my work, you might realize that I don't usually tend to gravitate toward these types of classic synth sounds. Obviously they're awesome and beautiful, but I personally tend to lean more toward more experimental sound design and often slightly weirder and noisier sounds in my own music making. So in this video, I'm gonna explain what Replay is, how it works, and we're gonna see how far we can push it and what unique opportunities it might offer for some more experimental sound design. If you wanna check out Replay and maybe get one for yourself, there's an affiliate link in the description below this video, and anything that you purchase using that link helps to support my channel, so thank you. Replay is a six voice virtual analog synthesizer. One of the first things you'll probably notice is this peculiar keyboard. As you might guess by looking at it, Replay uses Cherry MX tactile switches instead of conventional keys. These are the same kinds of switches that you'd find on a mechanical QWERTY keyboard. The instrument ships with smooth clickless switches, but in the user manual, they provide instructions about how to go about replacing these with the switch of your choice if you are so inclined. It may not be apparent on the video, but the enclosure is powder coated bent metal. So it feels very rugged and sturdy, but it's also quite light. Replay has a mono balanced TRS output, a TRS audio input, and a 3.5 millimeter MIDI input and output. It uses a standard nine volt center negative power connection, so it's compatible with pedal board power supplies. It also has a micro USB port for MIDI communication and access to a browser based editor. It's difficult to pick up on camera and admittedly a little difficult to see in person, but there are white text labels for all of the controls on the panel. It was a little strange at first to find my way around the panel because I really had to look at just the right angle to read all of the controls. But after using Replay for a little while, because the synth engine is pretty familiar, you learn your way around pretty quickly and it ceases to be a problem. All right, so speaking of the sound engine, let's take a look at how this instrument works. Replay's workflow is very similar to Roland Juno synths from the 1980s. There's a single oscillator and noise source. These pass into a low pass filter, which passes into a VCA. 
There's a built-in LFO that can modulate various aspects of the sound and an ADSR envelope generator, which can provide articulation to the filter and VCA in various ways. There's also an onboard arpeggiator with some fun tricks up its sleeve. Replay also allows you to store and recall up to 31 internal presets using the save and load buttons in combination with the keys, which each represent an individual memory location. So let's take a look at each of these core components, starting with the oscillator. So you can select the wave shape using this switch. The upper position selects sawtooth, the middle position turns the oscillator off, and the bottom position selects pulse wave. By pressing and holding the Alt button and pressing the lowest C key, you can also access a triangle wave. And by holding Alt and pressing the lowest C sharp, you can access a sine wave. When set to pulse wave, you can use the PWM knob to manually alter the pulse width. And by pressing and holding the Alt key and pressing the low E flat here, you can also use the pulse with modulation knob to set the depth of modulation from the LFO on the pulse width of the oscillator. You can also use the LFO to alter the oscillator's frequency. You can use this to dial in subtle vibrato or more extreme modulations. While on the topic of the LFO, by default, its wave shape is set to a sine wave, but you can use an alt function to set the wave shape to triangle, saw, ramp, square, stepped random, or smooth random shapes. The LFO also has a delay control, which continuously fades in the LFO's impact on all of the associated destinations with each key press. There's also a noise source built in with a continuous level control. Alternatively, this knob can control the level of an external input prior to the filter. And once again, this is accessed with an alt function. The filter in replay is a four pole resonant low pass filter with slider controls for cutoff frequency and resonance. The filter self oscillates when the resonance is turned up, so you can use it as another sound source. We'll come back to this idea later. The filter has three modulation controls for the cutoff frequency. The first is the envelope.
The second is for continuously variable key tracking so that the filter cutoff gets progressively higher for higher notes on the keyboard. At its maximum, it tracks one-to-one -one with the oscillator. And the last modulation for the filter is the LFO. The VCA has a continuous level control and three envelope modes. In the upper mode, the ADSR envelope is applied to the VCA. In the bottom position, the VCA is simply gated by the keys and disconnected here from the envelope. And in the middle position, a release only envelope is applied to the VCA using the release parameter on the ADSR controls to determine its decay time. These settings, when coupled with the ADSR modulation of the filter, can give you access to a really wide variety of articulations. And finally, the instrument has an arpeggiator. The arpeggiator has controls for rate, range, note order, and mode. The mode can be set to off, keyed, or to latch. When it's set to keyed, an arpeggio is only applied as long as you're holding down keys. And latch will latch whatever notes you're playing so that you can adjust different parameter settings while the arpeggiator keeps going. The range switch gives you access to one, two, or three octave arpeggio ranges, and the order switch gives you options for up and down arpeggios, arpeggios played in the order in which you press the keys, and a random order. The arpeggiator can be synced to an external MIDI clock, but by default, the arpeggio rate control is continuous and has a very wide range, which is something I've found to be a really useful control for expressive playing. And finally, there are octave keys to the left of the keyboard that allow you to shift up or down up to three octaves in either direction. These use the same tactile switches as all of the other keys, so it's very easy and fast to press them, allowing you to do quick shifts if needed. So that covers the basis of what this instrument can do on paper. Now you might look at this and think, oh, that's a pretty basic synthesizer. You might also point out that there are other synthesizers with more extensive synthesis features within its price range. 
And while that's true, in my mind, what makes an instrument an instrument isn't entirely about its spec sheet. A lot of what makes a musical instrument sound and behave the way it does isn't necessarily about its technical capabilities, but about the way that its features are surfaced and presented to the user. Standard analog synthesis techniques have stuck around for as long as they have, in part because they're so flexible and because relatively simple means can produce a wide range of musical results. Across the decades, many instruments have used more or less this exact same set of ingredients. I will say that when I first heard about this instrument from Vongen, before I actually got my hands on it, I was a little unsure about whether or not I'd like it very much, mostly because it seemed to have such a common synthesis architecture, which was already covered by some of the other instruments that I own. As I've gotten to know it, though, I've found that there's a lot about it that's really interesting. For one thing, it's really refreshing to have an instrument where all of the most important controls have direct hands-on features. And I'm finding that if I need classic vintage synthesizer style sounds, I can get to them very, very easily on replay. More than just classic synth sounds, though, I've also found that certain aspects of replay's design and user interface are leading me to explore techniques that I don't commonly use in my own sound design, or techniques that I've just never thought of at all. So for the remainder of this video, I want to share some different ways that I've personally been using and making music with Replay. I wanted to share some ideas that use the filter as a second oscillator. As I mentioned earlier, if you turn up the resonance on the filter, it starts to self-oscillate and produce a tone all on its own. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the oscillator off and turn up the resonance on the filter. And if we turn key tracking all the way up here on the filter, it will track melodically. Mm -hmm. 
which is pretty cool. So in addition to just having access to another sound source, there are some pretty interesting implications of using the filter as an oscillator in this instrument. The first thing that I noticed is that the LFO modulation is much deeper on the filter than it is on the oscillator. So we're able to access some much more intense timbres this way. You also now have envelope modulation over pitch at this point. And if you adjust the key tracking parameter here, you can dial in different microtonal tunings. Okay, awesome. So another thing you can do, of course, is combine this with the VCO to create harmonies with each key press. One technique I've really been enjoying is to set the filter oscillator and the VCO to the same frequency or a very close frequency and then apply a little bit of subtle pitch modulation using the envelope on the filter to pull the frequencies apart from one another. You can get this really beautiful kind of beating between the two tones. Let's apply a little bit of LFO modulation here. And I'm gonna turn up the delay on the LFO, which creates this kind of nice blooming effect as the LFO is gradually introduced to the filter. Something super simple but really nice that I've been enjoying about the arpeggiator on replay is that when you have it in latch mode and set to order, it will play back the arpeggio in the order that you press down the notes. So this is pretty nice because you can start something off and then add new notes and it will essentially sequence through all of the notes that you play in the order that you play them in.
So to expand on this idea a little bit, I'm still using the arpeggiator, but I've switched the LFO wave shape to be a saw wave. And I'm using the LFO to modulate the filter. I'm also uh, using some envelope modulation on the filter. And I have turned up the noise and mixed that in with the oscillator. So what we're gonna get here with this patch is kind of a layering of sound and a layering of articulation. We're gonna get articulation coming from the ADSR envelope controlled by the arpeggiator, and we're gonna get a separate articulation from the LFO. So it's clear that Replay was designed with the intention of being integrated into an effect pedal board. It was designed by a pedal manufacturer and it uses a pedal power supply. So I've also been really enjoying exploring a lot of different combinations of effects pedals with Replay. Normally when I'm using a synth, I do the majority of my sound design at the synth itself. But it's been really interesting to change that workflow around a little bit and think about Replay's sound more as a raw ingredient that's augmented or altered in some way by using different external effects processors as a primary sound design element.
All right, so that's it for this video. Special thank you to Vongen for sending me a replay to check out. Just a reminder that there's an affiliate link in the description below this video if you wanna get a replay for yourself. And anything that you buy using that link helps to support my channel so I can make more videos like this one. As I mentioned earlier on in this video, I really wasn't sure how or if this instrument would fit into my music making workflow. But I've actually really been enjoying the simplicity of replay a lot. I feel like the limitations of the instrument have really encouraged me to just get more creative with my sound design and with how I'm interacting with it. I've been getting super hands-on with all of the front panel controls and it's led me to a lot of, in my opinion, really beautiful new and unexpected sonic explorations. If you're interested in joining a really great community of people who are passionate about things like experimental sound, modular synths, and electroacoustic music, or if you're interested in things like unreleased audio and behind the scenes content, then I invite you to check out and possibly join my Patreon community. You can find all of the info about it and how to join at patreon.com slash sarahbellreed. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and for listening, and I'll see you next time.